This is a ComGrow filament dryer. Essentially it's a sealed plastic box that you can put filament inside. Um, and it has three ports, two to let filament out, and one where you can put power in when you're using it as a dryer. Um, so the two halves here are solid plastic, and they join together with a gasket here that's mostly airtight. So when you plug it in, it has a resistive heating element on the bottom and a tiny little fan that circulates air around, and you can set it to dry your filament. My only complaint with this unit, and I'm not sure if this is a problem with all units or just the one I happen to get, is that the fan is a little buzzy and loud. So I'm going to open it up and see if I can replace that fan with something a little quieter. So this is what the fan sounds like, at least on my unit. It moves air around, but it's a little buzzy. So to open the insides up here, there's four Phillips screws there, there, and here and here. Take those four Phillips screws out, this whole thing lifts up. So inside you can see there's a resistive heating element, the control panel, and a fan. That's the unit that makes noise. So this fan just slots into some pieces of plastic there, has some tape for the wire management. It is a model YF4010 DC 12 volt fan. I suspect the 4010 means it's 40 by 40 millimeters by 10 millimeters. So this fan plugs into the circuit board here. Each of these plugs is hot glued in place so they don't vibrate out. Um, so you have to rub off that hot glue to unplug it. Or you can cut the wires and solder a new wire in. The other connections, there's one from the power, one from the heater element, and then this little thermistor there monitors the temperature and keeps this guy at the right temperature. Now before I go buy a new fan, I'm running this thing not in the case, and it's a little noisy, especially when you turn it. But just sitting there, it's not that bad. So it really seems like this plastic box is acting as a sounding board for that fan. So if I just buy another fan that's of similar noise, it's still going to be loud. So I'm probably needing to get a super quiet fan. And I'm thinking about getting a 24 volt fan so that when they run it at 12 volts, it'll go at half power. It won't move as much air, but I don't really think you need to have much air moving through here. It's just enough to circulate, and that's all it really takes. I've considered some type of sound dampening material, but just holding on to the plastic case or pushing down on the fan doesn't seem to be dampening it much. So I think I just need to reduce vibrations as much as possible. The controls on the ComGrow filament dryer are very simple. We have the on off button. And right now it's at 23 degrees centigrade and 55% relative humidity. You change the mode. So there's the temperature and the setting. You can choose the temperature. So you have three choices. 40 degrees centigrade, 45, and 50. And you change the mode, and this is the time, so you can change the time up or down. Um, it basically will go up to 12 hours, it starts at 6 hours. So the minimum is 6 hours, maximum is 12 hours. When you're ready to go, you push the mode again until it says work. And when it says work, you can hear the fan turn on. It is 55 degrees Fahrenheit here in the garage, and the... Um, filament dryer is keeping things internally at a 50 degrees centigrade temperature, so the heater is adequate for pretty much any indoor environment you're going to run. Um, we had it running overnight, and it's maintaining the 50 degrees centigrade, and it's down to 25% relative humidity. This is the before sound. The wire on the new fan wasn't quite long enough, and the plug was a different size, so I had to solder these two together. Now I have a little extra wire I'm going to have to run around here, and I'm going to just tuck it in and put a little extra back and forth here and tape it down. Now initial tests look good. You can hear it's quieter. Um, I have to put the black plastic cover on and make sure there's no extra resonances there. So you can see here, there's still airflow coming out of this fan, even though this guy is running at 
12 volts instead of the 24 volts it's rated at. Obviously it's not as much airflow as original, but I think it's going to be just fine because this is just a heater and that's enough to circulate air throughout the box. It's a pretty small box. I've taped the wire down there, ran it around, tucked in some of the wires here, so it's taking the same path as before. This is how much noise it makes after replacing the 12 volt fan with a 24 volt fan so it'll run at half speed. So it did turn on. I can barely hear it. If we lift this up you can hear it a little better. It is much more acceptable. So while we're talking about design flaws, this is designed such that you can have two of these tall, narrow rolls side by side, and there's two ports, and that's kind of the ideal use case. But they say, oh, well, you can put a one wide roll in, and you know, it'll just bridge the thing. And that's true if your plastic doesn't stick up to the edge of the roll. So here, there's this center part. So you can see the problem most clearly from this angle um, with that clear roll. When it goes in here, you can see that any plastic up past about this mount here is going to run into that guy if this thing's rolling on the center. Um, so realistically, they need to have a big circular cutout here. Um, so you can see that support block is what it's hitting on. It's not actually rolling on the roller. So you can put it on the sideways, and it'll kind of roll sideways and wiggle back and forth. And the box keeps it from flipping over. So it mostly works, but it, it's a little bit harder. And especially if you have a cardboard roll, um, I'm worried about it getting stuck and then the printer not being able to fill filament out of that. So ideally, I'd be able to cut a circular cutout out of this thing so that in addition to these tall narrow rolls I could have wider rolls that could spin through there even if the plastic was near the edge. But I've decided not to cut that because it appears that this is the structural element that's keeping this grid from sagging down into that plastic because it does have to support two kilograms you know up to two kilograms of plastic here. Um, and so I'm worried that if I cut that down, even though these guys, you know, these guys here don't have much support on that side, so I could get away with cutting it pretty close on the other side, I'm worried this little bit here, that's kind of the big beam right down the centerpiece, because the sides don't have any box sections and it's kind of wiggly if you look at it. Um, it's this center beam that kind of keeps things off of that resistive heater. Now the heater's only supposed to go up to uh, 50 centigrade max, which isn't anywhere near enough to melt plastic. But I don't really want this like sitting on the heater either. Now on the other hand, that heater does appear just to be screwed directly down to the plastic, which is apparently the same type of plastic as this is, so it's probably not a thermoplastic. Um, so maybe it wouldn't hurt at all if this thing bent down just a little bit and sat on that heater.